In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. These are two original copies of my dad's letter that he sent to me. Um, he's 87 and in prison for life. I'm pretty sure he's in the psych ward or the psych unit. So there may be nothing to this, but he has been in prison a long time and has had a lot of time on his hands and he won't talk to me until I get his Nobel Peace Prize money. He says that it's planned um, for renewable free energy using nuclear fusion. And um, this is the most recent letter that I got, but the one I got before that, I think he actually has added a bunch because the math starts on the second page on this new one. So. But I'll give you a close look, and if I can get any insights on it, it would be great. Thank you. It goes on to the second page here. And I think he has good handwriting because he was a painter. He liked painting paintings and he also painted houses for a living. Not sure why the people are drawn so weird, but... <laughs> Talks about black holes here and a bunch of stuff. I have emailed a physicist before, but nobody could really help me out. Somebody said that you would have to be versed in a bunch of different areas. It might be nothing, but it's the only thing I have of my dad. And I thought it was kind of cool anyways, so... second page here yeah he says it's very simple to understand but I didn't think I was dumb but I don't understand any of this Honestly, I didn't go to college and I have not had time to study up, so. Okay, and it talks about quantum theory and stuff on this page. I am going to leave out the last page of this just because it has some personal information on it. But yeah, that's about it. Thanks. I wonder how long he's been in there and where is he getting this information as far as like these diagrams and everything go is a very interesting piece and the paperwork is a an amazing looking piece of art if anything i am curious to see like i'm gonna have to go back through and maybe read over these uh papers that he had handwritten in there i only caught a few glimpses of a, a certain things like he had numbers in between certain words that was, some of them were crossed out some of them were added like there's a lot of stuff going on here this is pretty interesting we might be looking at future technology right here in front of us and we just don't even know it 
Guys, if you don't know who this is, this is David Eckhart. He is like a brother to me. He's a very good friend of mine. And look, I just wanted to say that we've been posting some of the images that he sent me, and people are like, well, you know, that's some kind of jug of water. Guys, you have no clue what's going on. You think you know how to do this stuff. You think you know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. We're not wasting our time with this stuff. We're not trying to do this just to get views or, or trying to get noticed or attention. We're doing this because this is a real current situation. David recently, uh, a while back, gave an interview about one of his abduction encounters. Check this out. I've seen uh, areas where I was put into a, like a, a clean room. If you know what a clean room is, uh, as a drain in the middle of the floor where they, you can dissect somebody and you just hose everything down when you're done. It's called a clean room. And I knew that there was some uh, reptilian doctors that was on the other side of the door, but there was a platform evidently above, above the window I was working at, and there was uh, humans up there. And there was, I don't know why, they was pushing them off. It seemed like low gravity. And uh, and as they was falling, these things was coming out of the wall that looked like an electrical conduit, and uh, it would jab them each side of the leg and the inner side and suck all the fluid out of them. And uh, they would look like mummies as they was coming down, but they was coming down all the way to the floor, and they had the uh, shorter reptilian guys down there, and they was throwing the bodies into these burners, and they had this thing on the ceiling that was like half moon-shaped silver, and it would go over to a pile of bodies and pick them up, vacuum them up or whatever it was doing. I don't know how it was probably vacuuming them up and it would carry it over a batch of bodies over closer to a burner and they had these uh the short reptilian guys just throwing the bodies and they're burning it up it's uh that was kind of disturbing and notice he was talking about the reptilian doctors well he's had several visits from this guy this is one of them this is one of the images and there's a reason he posts these images guys there's a reason He's had experiences with them. They've stopped him from coming through these portals. They've created several stargates at one time, and he's watched these things pour into his house, go out the window, leave, come back, go back through the portals. Yeah, this stuff isn't made up. I know we posted here a few days ago, we posted an entity that looked like it was a puppet or whatever, and people laughed at it and thought it was a joke or whatever. It's not a joke. It's not. You can laugh if you want. I mean, you know, there's no way for us to just reach out and prove this to you and sort of, but... There's a reason that they're investigating David. There's a reason they stay for weeks at the time at his house. And they try to keep it secret. He's had visits from government officials telling him to stop it. To stop talking about it. This is real stuff. This isn't made up. So you can leave your comments. And, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're negative about it, you know... You know, it's okay, but, you know, don't insult insult us for trying to get this information out because, you know, there's some credibility behind this or these people would not just continuously be trying to pick David's brain. David's a special person, and there's a reason that he sees what he sees. Leave your comments. Wow, the picture is a shame that it's as blurry as it is. That's, I try to not be the negative guy like he said, but when you Show me a blurry picture, saying that's a reptilian doctor. It's like, dang it, and they're always in your house coming in and out, and that's the only picture you have and not anything better. It's just like, really? I think this is interesting. I did a little bit of research on the side on this, and apparently he has been approached by governmental officials on these subjects, and they have tried to quiet him down because they're copying it up as false information to the public and in that kind of makes you question that he's like okay maybe really he does have things happening in the government it's like uh-uh don't talk about that but who knows what do you guys think is this real or do you think that this is just really good foolery hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel i only ask once per video and i make a video like this every day and it'd be awesome to see you come back again tomorrow Do. I just made this from freaking plastic, bro. Mate, you see this device behind me? It turns plastic into gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. And over half a gallon of plastic diesel. Diesel I made from plastic waste. This is my plastic to fuel reactor. Now, I've recently got in my unique design patent pending, and I am in extravagant mental health. Well, so, I just finished running my plastic to fuel reactor behind me here. Let's see some of the fuel I got out, yeah?
Look at that. That's from plastic. This is real gasoline. This is plastiline. Gasoline I made from plastic waste. Plastiline? Gasoline made from plastic. Oh yeah, baby! I'm going to be running this engine here off of plastic diesel. I've seen a lot of these videos right here about this individual on TikTok. And he does actually in the time of me recording this video, he did have a live on TikTok of him using his Plasti Diesel in a truck with a newscast and everything. It was live, so I didn't catch it, but hopefully the video will be put back online uh, so that I can actually show it to you guys as well. But it, very interesting, and it makes me wonder, like, is he going to get shut down? I'm going to keep an eye on this individual it, it, to see if potentially he gets anywhere with this because he might be on to something. I personally think at the very end of this video, the old man is just shadow reflecting off of some of the corn, but overall, very creepy atmosphere. I do not believe that this video is fake. I think that it is real. I think her reaction is real and all of that. Hey, um, I would just be more concerned that she's out there at night potentially not armed. I would never walk out in the middle of a cornfield without protection, you know. So hopefully he doesn't get like kidnapped or anything because there could be people out there stalking. You never know. This creepy video comes from TikTok user Freckles93. I'll tag her below. And she posted a video to TikTok asking for help because her daughter was terrified of something in the house that she herself couldn't see. This happened to be an area where the dog was acting strangely earlier that day. And comments were full of suggestions, such as putting salt in front of the door or having the home blessed. But what would you do? Blakey, it's... you okay? I don't even do or say the Do you want me to go open the door? Why? Oh. No? Okay. Okay, I, I'm i honestly freaking the fuck out and I don't know what to do. Just a couple minutes ago, I got up and I closed my door because she kept pointing okay. to my room saying, yeah, Mommy, Mommy, right. someone's over there. Yes, and and she was terrified. She, she, was, she was terrified, of course, freaking me out. So I went over there and she just said, No, Mommy, come here. Come here, Mommy. Sit, sit, Mommy. Don't go over there. And so I called the dog and I closed the motherfucking door. And as you can see... Dude, she's still terrified. She's still terrified. She doesn't want me going over there. She doesn't want me open the door. I am... Dude, I'm terrified. Blakey, mommy's gonna go open the door, okay? I'll be right back. It's okay. I'll be right back. And now she's hiding her face. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> it's okay, baby. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, tell me I'm not... What do I do? I personally have mixed feelings about this video on a number of reasons. First, 
amazing hair on these individuals. They got some beautiful golden hair. Uh, but why is the mother, I'm assuming it's the mother, is like very vulgar mouthed in front of her child. That's kind of like, ugh, that's to me, as is really not good. There's a few reasons why I called Akery to this video. Depending on if this scenario is true or not, it says a farmer spotted the strange creature while checking on his bees. Now, this, this makes me think that this is probably a stunted video, or it could be a real video with a fake caption to it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if this is real or not, I've seen a couple of other videos with the same entity look alike. It could be, but I don't think it's real. <laughs> This video, on the other hand, I feel like this is a genuine video. The individuals here are reacting pretty authentically. I wish I could understand what they are saying. I've I have no clue what they're saying. If you by any chance know what they are saying, please leave a comment down below. This is a little creepy. I'm not gonna lie, there's a... a huge figure up there. It looks massive. You can see the outlines of the horns and how the eyes glow. Definitely looks beast-like. Whether it's a giant goat, or what it could be, I really don't know, but I think their reactions are extremely genuine. So, let me know what you guys think, or maybe you even know what this is exactly. I would be appreciative to know. Go check dude video out. These things is really walking. Um, these at least gotta be at least 200 feet tall, man. Go check it out. This looks like something from Attack on Titan. That would be horrifying to see 100 feet tall individuals just looming over a city coming towards you. If you're not familiar with Attack on Titan, check it out. It's a great manga series and a great anime series. On March 8th, it was a Wednesday afternoon, about 5.20 or so, uh, East Coast time. And it's about an hour and a half before sundown. Sun's low in the sky. And you can see from the shadows in the video where I'm shooting, the moon, the bottom left side, is not lit, right? But you can clearly see by turning around where the sun's position is in the sky, that it should it should definitely be lit. Why is that not lit? And I still have yet, from six months ago when I posted a similar video, I still have yet to find a, a good that, explanation. That's one of the first ones I put up, is when we were in the parking lot looking up, yeah. and it was just an odd angle. The sun was, the sun was actually on the same side as the shadow. 
of the moon. It was like it was like the bottom right hand side, right. but the sun was over to the right. Right. The sun should clearly, if 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 my should eyeballs be. can look up and see that shadowed part of the moon, the sun is right by me. It could see it too. It should have been able to be lit, and it's not. So that's kind of like you know a repeat of what other people have been posting lately. But the second thing I want to talk about is I still have yet to get a great answer as to why the craters on the moon are always the same color as the sky behind it. And what I mean by that is at night, when you look at the moon at night, well, the craters are always uh, uh, shades of black, right? Gray, yeah. black, uh, lighter or darker, so to speak. And in the daytime, on a blue sky, they're blue. Now, if the, if the moon is actually out of our atmosphere, as science tells us, 238,000 miles away, why would the color of our atmosphere, the color of our sky, have anything to do with the craters on the moon? Uh, what what do you attribute that to? Uh, you know, there's people that there's people with with the way out theory. At least I think it is that say it's a hologram. Yeah, that it's not even it's not even actually a, a physical thing. It's like a it's like a it's a satellite. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, you talk about the uh, what's his name? <laughs> oh God, the David Ikes of yeah. the world. Yeah, yeah. I, but I thought, hey, there's people that thought nine eleven being an inside job was a crazy yeah theory yeah. years ago. I'm just looking at this, and it is quite clear and we're looking we're looking out the window right now i'm sure we can see the moon the same way it looks very transparent translucent yeah. it looks like taking a, a half opaque object and putting it over something like in other oh, words you could see through it yes like i am convinced that if the sky were red that the craters on the moon would be red whatever color you place this moon on top of those craters become that color what's your what's your theory on that I don't know. I mean, of course, that implies transparency. What's your guess? I mean, what would you? That's how out there. It's it's it, it's. Well, the fun thing about the we're moon, looking at it and we're just trying to figure it out as we're looking at it. I you know I think that the the, the most encouraging part about all of this is trying to discover this stuff, and I mean that in all seriousness. I'm not trying to be cheesy, but man, I have learned so much in the last year or so researching this stuff. I don't know what my guess is yet, but I'm uh, I'm really enjoying the 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 path or i should say the journey to trying to find out i don't know man is it flat is it round is it transparent is it oh a, that's a the disc? other thing is it a disc yeah, yeah they, is it they, a flat disc i don't know i really don't know man but this right here the color issue still bothers me and that does in fact imply transparency but the third thing and i think i saw a guy one of the videos uh, i think flat earth asshole or somebody brought this up that's a good name yeah right <laughs> um about the craters on the moon so he brings up a point about the fact that, that, wait a second, the craters are all perfect circles. Every crater on the moon, when you zoom in, they're all perfect circles. Why is it that you don't see any trenches? Because a perfect circle would mean that the meteorite or the asteroid that hit it had to come from a 90-degree angle straight down, boop, to make the crater, right? There's no trenches. There's no well, also, if you look at that, it's a perfectly round object as well. Wouldn't any skim off the edges? Or... There should be tons. In fact, there should no, be that, more. No, that look like there's there's almost a, a gash. Dash. Exactly, like a, like a crash landing type yes, thing. Yes, yes. And in his video, he actually says, look, he goes out into the sand. He fires a, a BB gun, I think it was, into the sand and shows how, from different angles, it leaves different types of marks. And he was saying that the only pictures he could find of any meteorites hitting anything and leaving a trench was from hollywood films you know 2012 and things like that but in reality even on earth all we have is the circular craters so i get to looking into science's answer and science says well it's because these meteors hit they hit earth and they they may come in at different angles certainly but then when they get to where they're going there's so much energy that they combust and they blow up they explode and leave what you're seeing is the circular from the explosion, not from the hit. I thought, okay, all right. So like a nuclear bomb. Yeah, like a bomb. Like the nuclear bomb gets dropped and it explodes into the atmosphere and creates the mushroom cloud. Yeah, and then I'm like, wait a second. I thought the moon had little to I just, no oxygen. I just oxygen. opened up a whole new can of whatever. Yeah, People have said it only Both exists. Nukes, right? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Here we go. But, but then I look it up and I'm like, wait a second. Hold on. If that's your answer... How does something combust on the moon when you don't have the atmosphere and the oxygen in the air? Oh, wow. So how does that happen on the moon? And if your theory is correct on Earth, do you have any? Let's not forget one-sixth of gravity. 
right. officially, so it wouldn't draw in the, no, the would, meteorite would... with the same force as our gravity. Correct, and an explosion oh, probably... gravity, there we go again. Yeah, Another... yeah, right. <laughs> but an explosion wouldn't even act the same way. Yeah, we in, keep bringing up these gravity. different things because people don't believe there's such a thing as people gravity say, as well. Yeah, people are watching going, it's, there's no such thing as gravity. What is it, uh, density and buoyancy? Uh, yeah, it, the that's what they say. Essentially density oh, and buoyancy. kind of makes sense too. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I, I tell you, I'm, I'm pretty convinced of that one. But So my, my question is on this crater theory uh, that science puts forth. Can you show us any evidence of this no they can't there are no uh you know recent videos or, or, or uh, of meteors coming in hitting the earth and exploding and leaving a round crater it is simply science's best guess well they would they would say that place within the woods in russia was the last time when all the yes but they didn't they, we don't have footage of the impact no itself. it was in the 1910s 1920s i think yeah you know. that's right there's no footage of it there's no there's claims that something came down and boom, whatever, but we don't know that this is the I'm same. I'm just saying what, what these stories have said, that, that in their, his, their version of history, yes. it did indeed happen before. We just didn't see it. Right, we didn't see it. And, and, and that's what they claim is that all meteor holes are the same thing. The, the, the meteor came down, all of these craters, whether it's moon or earth, the thing came down and then it exploded, left the big ring. But yet this is simply a guess and we are taught as fact, everyone from from you know age six and up, five and up, are taught that the little holes in the moon are in fact craters. Well, we green cheese when you're a kid. Yeah, right. Well, I'm looking at all right. Let's let's say the edge of this uh, on the right, and as we're playing it or we're freezing it in our footage, it does look like there was impact coming from because the moon the moon doesn't rotate. That's why we always see the dark side. Correct. That's why we always see that same side, the lit side. The dark side is the side we don't see. Okay. So what direction? This is just my question from observation. It looks like actually on some angles that the meteorites came from Earth yeah. and hit the yeah. moon. No, I'm just saying. Look no, no, the, a lot of people the, brought that up. It's true. It's, they say, well, wait a second. If, if, it's, if the same side's always facing us, how did these asteroids or these meteors? It should be completely just it bulldozed on one side yeah. with meteorites. We're, yeah, the other side should be pelted, whereas this side should be relatively clean. You know, or this side should be destroyed. That's what I mean. If it, yeah. if it hits one or the or the top, right. But the bottom or the bottom edge. Mm -hmm. This is just something I'm looking at right now. Like the direction is coming from underneath. To yeah, hit so that. if it's coming from Earth, that makes no sense. Did an asteroid hit us? Bounce back? Fight off gravity and head to the moon and hit the moon? No, that I, to me that can't happen. But when you look at other shots of the moon closer up, you can what you see is circular craters everywhere. It's almost like a golf ball, right? And this implies that they came from that direction at ninety degrees. Once again, I asked the question. That it, you know, I see a lot more top, middle, but I also see once again on the bottom part of what you can search, Google it, or we'll bring up this image during the during this voiceover, but. Once again, I just wonder the bottom half. Another question altogether. Yeah. How does that? And once again, a perfect circle. So it was hit with almost. And what I'm looking at here is mostly all these seem like they were hit with the same exact force, same exact same, size. Right, right, right. Yeah. Same force, same exp uh, mighty explosion. Uh, there's none, you know, there's not very many that are smaller or larger. They're all relatively the same size. And, um, you know, it just, the more I look into the moon, Honestly, there's more questions than answers. What's the David Icke one? And not to quote him again, uh, but it's a quote from someone else that he quoted saying, uh, the moon, it's basically like the moon shouldn't be there. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. who built the moon, I think the book yeah, was. who made the moon or who, who put the moon there. Who yeah. built the moon, I think. Who built the moon. I found this extremely interesting because there's a few points that I didn't even think of. One, the near perfectly round craters facing us from Earth. Now, if the moon is 200 and some odd thousand miles away, then it's not directly in front of us. So there is objects that can potentially go over Earth and hit it and things like that. But also, they brought up a really good point of not having any crashed meteors or anything that looked like crashed meteors, such as trenches. You know, when like a meteor here on Earth crashes, it crashes at an angle and you can clearly see the trench of impact that it made when it crashed. And they brought up the point of asteroids and stuff exploding. If there's no oxygen up there for it to do that, how did it do that, you know? 
That was a bunch of good points up on that one. I, I actually really enjoyed it. It was a very long video, but it was a well-listened video. I, I really enjoyed this a lot. Leave a comment down below on what your guys' thoughts are because there's so many people that have mixed feelings about this, whether it's fake, space, real, we've been to the moon, we haven't been to the moon. What could it be? If you made it this far to the video, I want to go ahead and bring up this comment right here. Uh, in regards to how to fix this situation for myself, the comment says, One thing I noticed watching you commenting, Dude, in the first 10 minutes I heard you say I slash me so many times that it's not even funny. Maybe that's why people don't like you too much, you know? I must be honest, I don't like you too, but everyone must go through this with this phase. Eventually, you just need to be aware of everything you're saying, and I don't mind telling you something that's going to help you, even if you'll hate me for it, which I, I never hate anybody. I appreciate this comment more than anything. I suggest you work on your ego and do some shadow work as well. I think you can vastly improve yourself. I'm not judging. I'm not perfect either. Nobody is, but man, nobody likes egotistic people. Don't hate, it's just a suggestion. All the best to you, I'm sure you can do this. Hey, I really appreciate this comment. I'm not going to put uh, what video this comment come from because it is one from the past and I'm not going to display the user of this comment because I don't want nobody harassing anybody or things like that. What I do want to know out of this comment is how do you want me to improve myself? As far as the egotistic side of things go, I personally, and this, this falls in the line of egotisticism, if that's even a word, but this kind of falls in that line. I made this channel because I enjoyed watching conspiracy videos and theory videos, and I just like putting down my thoughts. For example, right now, I enjoy this process. There's not literally the individual that's watching this, you, you're not literally here in front of me. You are a camera. I can literally look at the camera as if I'm talking to you. And I really enjoy that because I feel like I'm making a connection, not only with myself when I make these videos, but to an audience that does watch my videos. I feel like that's, it's a very good thing. But what I'm getting at is I try to not be egotistical. I know my channel is called That Guy Dominic and that kinda evolves around me, Dominic, but it's not an ego trip. And whenever I use I and slash or me, it's because I have nobody here personally until you are in the comments to convey my stories. Like everything that I say when I say I've heard or I do or me or that, it's because I have to involve my life situations and my input to what I want to talk about. That's the whole reason why I make these videos is I like sharing my thoughts and putting them out to the public. Whether it's egotistical or not, I'm not sure. I do not try to be, I really don't. But I can see where it comes off as egotistical. So if you have any way for me to improve on this, kind, on this kind of comment, let me know. Do not be afraid to put it down in the comments. I'm not going to hate you for it. I'm not gonna ban you or block you. I love reading these types of comments because it does help me a little bit. I enjoy putting my thoughts on video to allow people to agree, disagree, talk about it in the comments. It's really fun. It is egotistic in a way. I definitely see it, but I do not try to be that way. I'm doing the best that I can here with what I have. If I had more people, then it wouldn't be all about me and me and I. It would be about you. That's why I always love talking to you guys in the comments because it's now outside of my realm and I can have these shared thoughts and opinions with other people in the comments. But with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. And with that, have a good day.